Welcome to the ASCO Conference 2012, Leading the System. With over 900 delegates here, this year is the biggest ever. I've recently become a member of ASCO and I've come here really to find about more developments, initiatives, what's happening in terms of the national agenda around education. This is my second year coming to the ASCO conference. Um, I think it's one of the best leadership conferences in the country. Being here is also an opportunity to meet lots of different types of leaders and share good practice. Networking, uh, hearing from very, very important people obviously that affect my school, my children. And also getting up to date, there are some very important changes going on. Expectations, whether they be from the government, the media or the chief inspector have never been higher and the price of failure has never been greater. School leadership may be one of the most rewarding roles in the world, but it's also one of the toughest. It is an exceptional job that requires exceptional skills from exceptional people. I think the quality of the speakers that you get means that you get to engage with people that are on the ground making those decisions, so I think it's an excellent platform. I think it's a great opportunity to come out and listen to the experts and network with colleagues and reflect on what the current practices are. But I also think with ASCO, the stuff at the conference is always pretty cutting edge, so I think it's really good to come and hear about what's on the horizon. Today I'm particularly interested to hear what Sir Michael Wilshaw has to say about the new Ofsted framework. Inspectors will expect to see evidence from you and your governors not only that the process of performance management is robust, but also that pay and promotion are dependent on performance in the classroom. With no notice inspections, teams can arrive in school on days when school leaders are involved elsewhere in system leadership. I think the no notice inspection really is uh, symptomatic of that lack of trust. It's clearly an agenda that wants to catch people out. Satisfactory isn't good enough. That's why we're proposing that the satisfactory category should be replaced from September by requires improvement. I think it's a really good opportunity that we can ask the people who make the decisions why they're doing what they're doing and for them to actually hear what people on the street or at the chalk face think. I've just led my school successfully out of notice to improve category. Now that satisfactory is really NTI, what advice would you give me to motivate my staff who now feel demoralised by this battle? I know there's a, a, a disquiet about some of the things and it's important that they're able to um, voice that disquiet. Do professionals working in a climate of fear give of their best? This catch them out mentality doesn't seem a good way of encouraging system leadership. The tone he put on it seemed better than the way it's been reported but the feeling of everyone who's experienced it is that's not what's been happening. The exhibition itself gives school leaders a chance to see what is out there. We always find one or two really sort of good, exciting new nuggets. Class Watch was one I was very interested in. Information about innovation in ICT. The greatest plus point about the ASCO conference is that it brings together key decision makers. And we're absolutely delighted to be here because this is probably the best event that we attend. It's always a real opportunity to meet new clients but also to um, touch base with our existing clients. We're all good friends and uh, really enjoy conference. This year has been one of great change, but has also seen a whole raft of issues presented, many of which are challenging for our members. Pensions, budget cuts, curricular change, performance management and, of course, the uh, Ofsted framework. There's also the backdrop of a pay freeze. That's juxtaposed against an imposed increase in pensions contributions. Askell has made it clear to the government that it is making a grave mistake in raising the pension age. Worn out staff are not the key to higher standards, nor are demoralised ones. I thought Brian Lightman's speech this morning was excellent, very inspirational, very matter of fact. I really enjoyed that. Well, I'm looking forward to the next part. I'm interested to hear what Mr Gove has to say. I believe that we need changes in funding, in human capital, in the curriculum and qualifications, in accountability, and in the structures that we create to drive innovation and excellence. Money should more transparently follow students and their choices. Schools should be freer to expand. And accountability for what is done with that money must be clearer. I'm also delighted that more and more free schools are up and running. They're overwhelmingly led by great heads, and they're pioneering new ways of teaching and learning. 
We have a big concern about creating new schools in an area where there is no basic need. How can you possibly afford to do that? Well, I'm an enemy of the forces of social stagnation. And there are no better allies to have in defeating those forces than all of you in this room. We have to make the professional development of our staff the highest priority so that we are the ones who raise the bar ourselves rather than allowing expectations to be imposed upon us. It was just so brilliant to find out about what's going on on a national scale and also to listen to the people that are making the policies, also just meeting new people. Inspirational speakers like Brian Lightman this morning are absolutely incredible. I'm defected from the NUT. I moved about a year ago and I've been exceptionally pleased with the service that's been provided. I mean, I'm not a member, but I will be as a result of this. 